Hi everyone, so today I am making this. It's an old project that's been sitting on my shelf since 2015. It's like some scraps that I thought, you know, one day, one day, one day. I'm getting tired of looking at it. I just keep putting it off because this is what the circuit board looks like. And this is all the notes I have. I found some paper notes. So basically this was a two knob overdrive. It's sort of like an OD1. It's got a fixed tone control. It's very simple. It all worked really well. I just didn't bother building them or selling them. And this case is a smoked chrome powder coat, which was then laser engraved. And then it's got a clear powder coat on the top. And it's right at the end of when my CO2 laser was dying. So you can see it's not entirely consistent, uh, especially the back panel. So I've got to drill these out prep the board. I'm thinking I might hit it with the drop saw to bring the sides in and then hit it with the grinder. I've got to clean up all that copper. It's oxidized. Um, I don't have anything to tin it so I might just tin the whole board with solder when I'm finished. Get started drilling all this stuff and then I'm gonna have to work out what I meant by all this wiring. Uh, what I had in mind because this is all I've got for notes and I really didn't build like many of these at all. So Here's my little rant. I'm in a bad mood. This is Edo drill. Don't buy them. It's a piece of crap. This is my second one. They've died. I've replaced the run cap because that was measuring bad, but that wasn't enough to save it. It's it's dead. It's false economy. Don't buy it cheap from brands like this because they're just designed to die. And for a lot of you, you already know this and you're like, well, duh. But you know, I'm, I'm learning. I do have safety glasses on. So if I bring it in a bit, it'll be fine. I won't spend forever on it. Should fit. I'm just gonna put this drill bit in the chuck and clear out all this aluminium. Or aluminum if you're American. Yeah, I was gonna say I can't go too far because I'll hit the uh, bench. I'm really afraid using a hand drill that I'm just gonna punch through and scrape the box. Yeah, that was close. 12.5 mil bit for the DC socket on the side. I'll do it right on the edge of the table. I think we're done in the garage. So this is a single sided board. Um, it's a home acid etch. I used the CO2 laser to make the mask and then I've just used a, an acid bath with a bubbler and a heater. So I've scraped back the oxidized copper. It was pretty easy. I just used some brass wool or steel wool at the kitchen sink. And I'm going to use this Dremel to drill it. I don't recommend that you buy a Dremel. This is a fantastic tool, but the amount of money and it's also, it's a bit clunky. It's plastic. It's very difficult to change the pieces compared to a regular chuck or, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy I have this. Okay, the board's all drilled. I'm just going to start plugging it in and trust my little diagram here is correct. The spacing on these isn't exactly what I expected. Should probably turn the iron on, huh? I can start soldering this. So these boards don't have any through hole plating, it's just copper holding it on one side, so the part really has to be close to the board because it's pretty much just glue holding the copper on which is holding the part on so mechanically i like to spread the legs and again i'm making sure that they're pushing hard against the board oh, i didn't love that this is some old copper well really doesn't want to flow i mean it does it's not as nice as a modern clean board all right let's get going one megs i think there's only one one meg all right and the one meg's just a pull down resistor, so I think it could have even been a 2M2. Not fussy. I changed my mind about tinning the whole circuit board because it's, I'm just going to make more mess if I do that. 15Ks, there's two of. Okay, one here. One here. Alright, these are working out much better. I think that other corner of the board needed a bit more cleaning. I'm trying to hit the copper, not the lead. 
yeah, these are kind of looking a bit like big blobs. Uh, they're okay, I won't. I'll leave them alone. 10 and 10, just two of them. Three, four, four of them. So what do we got for 10s? I might get some clear ones out of bulk. Two, four. Oh, we nearly dropped it. Yeah, I could run the extractor, but I don't want to. It's just the... It's noisy though. I'm just blowing the fumes away. I'm spending more time finding parts and pushing them in the board than soldering at the moment. I'm going to cut these off and reflow some of them. And some of them too, I'll just cut the leg off so I can solder it without the leg. Clean the tip. Try that. This one here, I just want to push it through a bit more. Use my finger, there we go. What do you got? Tens are in, 1k. How many 1k's? Just the one? Okay. So I'll cut this again, but I'm going to leave a little bit more than usual because it hasn't got the through hole plating. I do need it to mound up a little bit on the bottom side of the board. That's cooperated much better. Great. That's missing 2k. I've got them over here. How many? Just one. The spacing's a little wide, so I'm just sort of centering it, make it look neat. Cool, let's see, 100k, running out of resistance to put in, so that's good, and a 47. I'll put the 47 in. So what's missing? Yeah, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in, yes, 100k and 100k. This one fits really well. The last flat part I think is that diode. Calls for a 1N5819, I'm going to use a 1N5818. I'll flow that a bit better when the next component goes in beside it. Let's strain it up. So the chips in these, it's calling for a TL072. You could also use any dual up amp, like a 4. 558D, 4558. Chip is in. That, these are fake J201s. Um, they're like a fake Fairchild logo. They came from China. You can get non-Fairchild J201s that aren't fake, but these are pretending to be, so they're counterfeit. So they are fake. But for the purposes I'm using them for, they will work great. It doesn't matter. I'm actually using these just for this job. So I'm just going to solder the center legs and then sort of straighten it up. Wait, but something's not right because I've got a square here. Crap. Yeah, no, I screwed that up. That one has to go across one. Whoop! Oh well. Now I wasn't paying attention and that transistor is offset by one space. It's meant to be... Anyway, not a big deal. I'm going to use a solder sucker between my legs. Like I said, it's not going to be a huge problem. And then I'll now come out. Uh, the scrap gets put on the pile. Make sure I haven't made the same mistake twice. Nope. Okay, good. Though I did just fill a hole which is meant to be vacant, so I have to suck that again now. Trying to fill that hole beside it. Yeah. Okay, so how are we looking? As the cap goes there, so there's a hundred, but I'll see if I can fit in a a 220 instead. I think that's more what I had in mind. And what else have I got for electrodes? This is a 10. What's the 10 microfarad? Is that bias filtering or what's that doing? I don't think there's going to be harm in beefing this 10 up to like 100. The spacing's not really um, ideal, but it works. So what else is missing? 100 nano input cap, 
it's a hundred nano. That is wide spacing. Uh, I think I have some wide spaced hundred nano caps. Matter of fact, I remember I left one in here. Oh, actually, that's not perfect. Let me check bulk. Do. Ah, so one's too wide, one's too narrow. Um, hmm, that's annoying. Try that one. That could be it, actually. That's it. Cool. Nice. A nice DIY looking green cap will do the job. I might cut those legs. I didn't clean the copper very well at this end, but oh well, whatever. That worked. Yeah, that worked. That's good. There's a one microfarad cap on the, it's probably the output. Oh yeah, that's cool. And there's a what, 10 nanofarad cap beside it. It looks like it's maybe 3.5 mil spacing instead of the 5. That's beside that. What do we got? Yeah, that works well. Let's see if I can clean that up a bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so what's missing? Cap is in, it's not very straight. Let me just straighten it up, there we go. 47 nanofarad. I think a five mil spaced part will fit there. You got any green caps? Yeah. I wouldn't mind using the green cap. It's just more period correct to what I would have been using back then. Plus, it's good using up old parts. I'm trying to blob it all in together. Okay, anything missing? Just these wires, I think. All the parts are in by the look of it, so... I'm going to start cutting the wires, putting them in. I might do them one at a time. I'm not very sure about what's happening with this and I don't want to make any mistakes. I know it's faster to sort of prep everything and but I'm not in a rush. This is a long one and a slightly shorter one. I'm gonna say that the long one goes to positive. Yep. And the shorter one goes to ground. Razor blade. So if it's going to ground, it's going to go to the input socket, which is going to act as a switch for the battery. So what's this one? This is ground. So I'm going to take off a big chunk because these boards are really thick and the pads aren't through-hole plated. It is important that the insulation's flush against the circuit board again. I don't want to push or pull. Um, there's very little holding that on, but I feel that that's nice and secure. So that'll be fine. Okay, this one I'm going to take off a decent amount, about three mil each side. I'm going to put the long end again into the PCB because it's a really thick PCB. This looks like it's maybe two mil or something. Now this wire, I'm going to solder it to the next adjoining part so the copper isn't really required. And the next part is the protection diode. The positive also splits off to these parts which handle the LED. Uh, there's LED current limiter there, and it'll come out there. Hopefully this is all going to come back to me. So I'm sort of trusting if I put this here, put that there, it's all going to match up to something later. So I'm just sort of trusting whatever I've done in the past, and I'll make it up as I go. So I'm going to do a few at a time just so I can keep track and not make mistakes.
So let's see, this one here is going to the 100 nano input capacitor, so I'm going to say this must come across into the foot switch for the send, or like it's the circuit in kind of, after it's gone through the bypass. So I'm going to leave not too much on the end. So that's the inputter. Which one? That one there. And there's enough hanging out the side to solder onto the copper. Again, it's not through hole plated, so it's just that little millimeter or two that you leave sticking out, which is going to actually solder to anything. And I'll tin the other end. These two, 100k, and what's that goes to the 2k. So this is going to be the gain pot, I think. So I'm just going to need two wires. They're both the same length. So I'll prep them the same. It's about three millimeters off each end. Ooh, that reminds me, I'm going to need to get pots for these that can handle. Because um, usually I use PCB mount pots. But this was designed for, you know, the regular solder terminal ones. Like the hand soldered ones. Wire soldered? Maybe we'll say wire soldered. Wire terminal. So I'll check my stock. If I don't have them, I'll just have to chop some legs off a PCB mount one. Okay, it's not soldering very well. I didn't clean the pad very well. gonna have to do and then while these are in place I'll just tin them as I tin them I'm careful not to sort of flick it back and then catapult it at my eyeball because I've done that enough times to know not to do it so if you if you like tin it with your iron and flick the back sometimes it flicks it at you don't do that So this will go to the volume pot, because this one's carrying earth, so it'll go to volume pot log number one. And log number three is the output. So these are the same as the previous two I just did. It's coming together, it looks like a thing now. For years it's been sitting on my to-do bench. Not really looking like much. But if I leave it sitting around, it's going to get really scuffed and surprised I protected it this long. Whoops, that is a, a bridged connection I'm not, not meant to have. I've just made a short circuit here. And I just broke it. Good. Okay. This is two little links up there. What else? And there's that link here. That why there, I don't know what that does. Yes, I do. I think that wire there is going to join one of the potentiometers up to a, the toggle switch up here. It just says wiring on the board. It's a off-board wiring. So I'll cut these. One's a bit longer than the other, obviously. So basically, these are all going to wrap under. The pots are going to connect underneath and then at the last bit there's going to be a wire that connects the toggle and that sort of secures the board down and stops people lifting it up and fiddling it's like a lock you have to desolder or pull apart uh, this is a very old layout I don't build pedals with the side mount jacks anymore except for the germanium amplifier which is like a legacy build Okay, so I've got the long one here. The long one goes into the furthest distance, that makes sense. I'm just going to dangle the solder off the edge of the board here. Cool. Okay, like that doesn't want to feed into the board. The donut's just a bit too small. Come on. Let's try and feed it from the opposite side. There we go. 
sort of tried to clear the hole a bit. Let's try that again. There we go. That's got to go all the way down against the board. This is Teflon insulation, so it's not going to melt, but if you had um, siliconized or just some cheap rubber, then it might melt as you push it in. Um, but this one won't. There's a little blob of solder there. As far as I could tell, the board's done. It's going to tin that. Uh, all the holes are filled, so the board is done. They're going to wrap around later. Uh, same with those. That's going to come across like that, I think. They're going to come like that or something like that. They're going to come across, and that's that. Cool. Oh, that's not in yet. This wire is connecting up the LED, and I'm not really sure how the LED is going to fit in here. I think I just like super glued it in or something. Uh, and the board's going to sit on top, so I really don't know. I'm just going to... Yeah, I don't know. I might make that separate and then wire it to the board after. I might just start putting stuff in the box, um, see how it's all looking, handle that LED, and um, try and reassess what I had in mind originally. So one DC socket in a 12.5 millimeter hole. Clear out all that burr that I made with the hand drill. Let's try not to cross thread it, there we go. So what I'm going to do is tighten it off, offset uh, anti-clockwise by a tiny amount. And then as I tighten it up, I'll have room to sort of twist it that little bit further where I want it to finally seat. Um, because I also don't want this point coming out sideways. I want a flat part of the nut so that the stereo socket's going to fit in there. Oh, that worked. There we go. Okay, I just went and got some hardware. The foot switch has a little bit of wiring. I'm going to start that now. And at least two of them, and one that's a little bit shorter than both, by about that much. Take about two millimeters off each end, not much. You don't need much to go into a foot switch. Uh, this one about two, and then something like five. I'll make a bit more than that. I'll make that the five one. Okay, and I'm gonna tin these. Clean the iron tip. Uh, you could use a solder bath to do this. I used to. I just don't do enough of this to sort of warrant turning it on anymore. I used to have all my pedals require a lot of wiring and tinning like this, so I do it all in bulk. Uh, now I barely use wires, I just use lead clippings to hook everything up. Okay. So, there is a link that goes in. This isn't the best foot switch wiring, it's just a, a legacy one that um, it's easy for me to remember. And it sort of physically hooks everything up easily with the layout. It will ground the input on bypass, but it doesn't ground the output at the same time. So I'm just flattening all that up. Doing a little mechanical wraps, trying not to pull the terminals. Uh, these are new to me, these are some Gorva Meccano foot switches. I was using the blue CIC and hopefully I, I might go back to them, it's just I happen to have these at the moment, so I'm going to use them up. It was just convenient for me to buy these. Okay, so I can put that link wire in. It looks like it, it's gonna say it might be a little bit long, but it should be right. I'm gonna put a little kink on the end, go in the opposite direction, and then feed it through. Cool. So, we'll mount this in. Let's see, let me take a look at the mono, it's going to look like that. What 
I might do I used to do a wire um, going from the stereo input socket to earth the switch but I'll just use um, a zero ohm resistor going straight down to the chassis and hook it up to the star serrated washer and I've got to work out the spacing once all the hardware's on etc so I'll just take a guess I don't know um, I'm not using a thick nut so maybe something like that so I can see nearly two threads I like that for height Looks pretty good so that's the earth connection which earths the signal input and also toggles the LED need a bit more okay I'm gonna put the mono socket in which is the output I'll get it looking sort of straight and now I'm gonna put this battery connector in and chop some excess off not much just try that how's that looking it's good and cut the insulation off let's go use the side of my side cutters make sure you didn't damage the wiring and twist it and tin it I'm just going to combine them by twisting them together some people use a cable tie or nothing I just like keeping it one part without adding extra plastic and I'll just fit the negative in tuck it in and put the positive in oh dropped it and get it about where it's going to live before I solder it because otherwise it might just melt and push through looks pretty good now that negative I'm going to leave in there but for now I'm just going to with my finger hold it down and then tuck the wiring in so someone can pull that later pull the slack out next we have the input wire this one I'm going to pre-wire sort of just put one little hook on that then at a 35 degree angle crimp it on but not too tight so it's not as tight as possible put the star washer on and put that stereo input socket in so it's a mono signal but we're using a stereo socket it's working as a switch to switch the negative to and from the effect and switch the battery off when nothing's plugged in I'm going to feed the input in it's a tight fit there's gore that switches and I uh, sort of tuck that slack away I want to get this signal away from the DC positive I'm not expecting noise on the DC but okay the output so the true bypass can come in through the switch and straight out which looks really neat with these side mount jacks so I just put some kinks in that wire I'm just going to push it down so it doesn't hit the enclosure wall at the bottom so what do I need for the pots 1 meg A gain and 10k A volume okay hey we got one I'm going to recycle this the legs have already been cut off it that'll work well so I'm just going to bend this leg off and the other two Take that indexing tab off. Now of this gain pod, I could probably link two of these together. Terminals three and two, I'm going to join off board. I probably need spacing, something like that. Let's see how that goes. Clip that off and wrap it around. 
Now I'm not going to solder the middle one because there's a wire going in later. Unfortunately these knobs are going to sit a bit high later but um, I'm not going to chop the shafts and I'm not going to be able to pack them out on the other side because there's not enough depth in these enclosures. So it is what it is. I'm just going to make sure it's straight and tighten it up. Now the switch. I'm thinking it was a three-way. Yeah, it says center off on the schematic. Alright, that's fine. So I'm going to try a trick whereby I load in all the hardware back on the switch and then hopefully it's going to fit well with a dress nut. I need to buy more of them. I've only got six of those left and I'll put them on the order list. Okay, and the star washer. That looks pretty good. I'll try that. Yep. I'm going to tighten this up without scraping on the bottom. And there's not much thread left, it's probably just the right amount. So it's the center off three-way switch. So the output comes straight off the volume pot. So I'll have to pre-wire that. It's probably what that wire there is meant to do. So that probably goes from the output pot straight to the switch. So one end's got about three mil and the other end's got about two mil stripped off. You don't need much going into the foot switches. So here we go, I'm going to put some solder on. I'm trying to get it underneath because it could actually short to the enclosure if it goes under. Probably not, but if you make a big blob. Put some on the iron, heat that up. That'll do. Yeah, that length looks pretty good. One nut, one washer. Try and tighten that up. So I don't use these often, but I'm going to put a cap on this pot so it doesn't short to the circuit board. And now the clipping switch, the middle terminal goes to the 2K and the negative inverting terminal of the op amp. So I've identified that to be this one here, which is going to uh, lug number one of the gain pot. So I'm thinking I meant for this little wire here, to make that connection between the two off-board. Um, back when I was wiring these, if it wasn't a bad thing to get wiring off-board because it would have meant the same amount of wiring, but it's easier to get the board in and out, service it, etc., which I had to do a lot more when I was beginning, especially a lot more of this handmade stuff. Um, honestly, it's not as reliable as a through-hole-plated modern board. Uh, so about, let's say it this much. I'm going to put the shorter end in the center of the toggle. Okay, now the real mess is going to be this LED, how to do this. Here's the LED I want to use. And it's fairly loose. I'm not sure how I used to secure it. Maybe I used to use a bezel. Maybe something like that. The bezel might not be a bad idea, otherwise I've pretty much got to just glue it in and then I thought maybe I could put some foam on so that the board holds it down. I'm gonna put this wire in because I think I had this for the idea of being the LED wire. It's very long. Let me plug this one in. It's bugging me. So that's the output. Before I solder it I might just try and get it in position a bit better. There we go. That's final position. I'm not sure what I meant for that. I guess I'll find out. But, you know, I think I wouldn't mind having that little bezeled one in there. That does look cool, but... So I think I'll go drill this out further and put this little 3mm bezeled LED in so it's got something to mount on. 5.5, so I'll drill this out to 6mm out in the garage. Okay, I think I lost some footage, but... Uh, I haven't missed much. I'll just put that little LED in and a wire. And I think I'm ready to start mounting everything in for the board. Yeah. So let's start with that LED. So that's the positive for the LED. It's running through a 
um, current limit resistor. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on these terminals for the pot here. Probably should have done it before it went in. I was trying to heat the tab, the terminal, the whatever's left, the bit of metal. Okay. And then from there I can just liquefy that on. Done. One more. There we go. There we go. And I just melted that cover a tiny, tiny bit. So it's probably melting on my iron. Whoops. I'm going to feed this through and solder it. For that LED wiring, I think um, some heat shrink would have been good, but should, yeah, I think it will just fit like that. Maybe I'll put some foam on it or something. Fold it forwards a bit. Yeah, I might put some foam. This is more of a desperate measures thing. I don't like using this in production, but it's just more of a backup safety for an old DIY style build. Let's go put that there so there's nothing that can short on that LED. Ooh, I hope it's all gonna fit. That's too much. Okay, it might not fit now. Uh, the enclosure lid might be hitting against it. So I'm just gonna put a section of it and throw that in the bin. So somehow that's come out way too long. Um, much shorter than that in a sec. This one looks about right. And this one... Yeah, it looks about right. So that could be come out way too long. I'm just gonna cut... What's that, like 10, 10 millimeters off? And I'm gonna use this tool now because it's a bit hard to get the razor blade in there. Tin the end again. And it's a little bit too long. Let's try that. Straighten it up at the board. There we go. That's a little long, but it's a lot better. I don't want to cut it again. It's going to stress things out. It's better too long than too short. That's for sure. I'll just absorb that little bit of slack. I'm going to rotate these. There we go. So they run in parallel, side by side. Ah. Tried. Looks like there's one wire left and this wire is going to run from the negative up to the stereo input socket as a switch and this should be the last solder joint I think. There we go. That's it. That's the soldering done. This positive wire's gone a bit here and there, but what can you do? I'll turn my iron off. And I've got these knobs. That's an old build, so I'm going to put these knobs I don't usually use. This is sort of like a resurrection build anyway. It's like free materials that I made up years ago. Okay. Prop screw just fell out. So I just plugged the pedal in and tested it, and it works, but I'm going to give it two tweaks. Right. I have to take the knobs off so that I can get into that dress nut so I can pull it apart again. It should be pretty easy. Just try not to scratch the box while I do this. Unfortunately, that LED bezel's in the way for me to grab it. Okay, let me try some pliers, maybe. Oh, that's annoying. I can't get in there. There we go. So I can't easily get that switch out unless I take this middle terminal out as well. So I'll do that. Come on, out you come, there you go. Cool. Okay, now the whole board should lift out. While that terminal's hot, I'm going to take the solder out of it.
Is it good? Yep. Okay, I'll take this foam off. That transistor that I sucked out before, I have to take it out again because I'm going to put a diode in there instead. Oh, the legs must still be soldered on. There we go. Try that. That one, that. There we go. I can recycle that later. I'm going to get one of those 1N5818s and use it as a clipping diode. Uh oh, it doesn't fit through the hole. It's too thick. That is a problem. I'll just try and poke it through the back side first. Nope, doesn't like it. Here we go. It's just making it now. Alright, let me try from the top. It's not really wanting to cooperate. I might just cut some length off so it's a bit straighter again. There we go. Okay, one more mod I want to do is put a 47 picofarad capacitor across the feedback section of the first op amp. That should be between pins, what is it, one and two on a dual op amp. So I'm just going to tack this on the back. I think. Yeah, there should be heaps of space. So here we go, we're going between pins one and two. I'm just going to liquefy that and blob it in. I'll come back to it in a sec. There we go. And that's pin two down there. I'm going to put more solder on and push it down. And then go back to this one. There we go. So yeah, put that foam back on. It's not very sticky now, I might get a new one. Here's some foam. Now they need it in the middle. Whew. Okay, now I gotta get that switch back in somehow and test those mods out. Uh, again, it's landing somewhere that's really hard for me to tighten this up with the LED bezel in the way. It's unfortunate. I just twisted it a tiny bit. I'd hate to slip now and wreck it all. Come on, come on. Okay, I can grab it now. I put that wire back on. Cool, we're done with the iron again. I'll put the knobs back on and put the bottom panel on and that will be finished. For the bottom panel, it has got some minor scuffs on it and the print is a little bit faded where the laser was dying, but um, I think I'll stick with it anyway. Um, I don't have a sales outlet for this pedal, so I can sell it at a reduced price, or... That's a bit of an oddball pedal anyway. So I'm okay with that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to stick rubber feet on, screw the bottom panel on, and it's all done. I'll sign my name on the bottom. Thank you so much for watching, the mods went well. There's no demos on this, it's just a straight up overdrive, no tone knob, uh, really neutral, works well with the um, neck position pickup. Uh, pretty glassy, pretty neutral, like an OD-1 with some mods. And uh, thank you so much for watching, take it easy.